girls. Girls, girls, girls. What have I said? Absolutely, don't even look at that power supply. Why can't we just get rid of it? We can't get rid of it. We can never get rid of it. Hey guys, Hardware Hound here. We are back with Gamdius, and they have a power supply that is so mesmerizing that I almost wonder if it's uh, possessed by some kind of ancient Greek deity. I guess we're gonna have to find out, but I will say, RGB PSU looks fantastic, but it has to perform well to actually be worth it. So let's go ahead this time, dive right in. We're gonna do the closer look. We're gonna go through our testing results and then we'll be able to wrap up this review. Oh man, guys, I... Is there a more beautiful power supply than this? I just, I don't think there is. And I mean, clearly I have seen every power supply in the world, so I know that, but <laughs> uh, this thing is just gorgeous. I really do like it. I mean, it is clearly up there as one of the best looking power supplies ever. And I just love that color wave that's going on with this fan. That's in the grill. And I, I mean, that's what's one of the things. So look at how Gamdius has done this grill. They didn't just do a standard, standard, typical circular grill like any old power supply. They put like a design in here. We got their logo right here and that silver accent is just fantastic looking. And look at what happens as we turn sideways. We've still got the same, we got a little bit of a sideways view here. So if you've got the, the power supply upside down like this, and you've got it set so that the fan is doing an intake from the bottom and doing the typical dust filter thing, you're still going to have your logo up right side up on a standard case, and you got your you know logo stuff here. You have all of your ratings and stuff, so we'll just bring that up to speed so you can just kind of see that a little bit. So you know, there's, there's your voltage regulation and stuff, but clearly this unit was meant to be seen. So you can flip it this way and we've still got a right side up logo. So they did that well. And here's how you really know they want you to see this unit like this is that, look at that. This one will be upside down if you turn the, the power supply any other way. So this is kind of what they're really intending for with this unit. So let's take a look at a couple more of these LEDs real quick. So it's really pretty simple. You can see here on the back, You've got a silent mode that's on. If I turn that on, this fan's just gonna run full speed. You can hear it now. It's not obnoxiously loud, but it's definitely making some noise. So, you know, most people are gonna probably wanna keep the silent mode. And there's the RGB lighting switch. So let's go through these modes. So I'm on, this is actually like one of the last modes here, which is my favorite. So here we go. We've got a cycling effect with a solid color like that. So now as we go through it, it's just gonna keep changing those colors pretty straightforward purple looks good looks really good white all right so now once we get here we've got a multi-color effect and we're doing kind of a breathing and somewhat of a random cycle here so yeah pretty straightforward just wanting to show them off more than anything so there we can turn the light off oh i don't like the light but i really like the design well okay you have that option so now we keep going we're doing a multi-color effect and just that effect with a breathing. So now we're gonna probably cycle through quite a few breathings here. So there's the red breathing. And so, yeah, let's go ahead and, you know, knock through some of these here. Oops. Alrighty, so now once we get through the breathing effects, now we've got just a static color. You can do the multi-color like that and it'll just stay put. And then bam, solid red. There's a, kind of a lightish green or yellowish green. There's our full green, light blue, dark blue. Sometimes it's hard to tell in the cameras, that's why I'm calling these out. There's a purple, there's a white, and then there's, we're back to the beginning. That's a lot of color options right there. So definitely felt like this was really worth doing on the closer look. Let's talk about the cables now while we have this guy open before I put it in the case. 
So here's our 24 pin connector. I'm using the loop back plug to get it turned on so we can do a really easy look at this. So they're using the black ribbon cables on this. And I know there's some controversy on this. A lot of people think they don't cable manage well. I personally haven't had any issues with them. I kind of like the flat cables. But the biggest thing I like about the flat cables is that they're black. We don't have a bunch of weird multicolors, so that's good. But that's going to bring us to one slight problem that I already have with this unit. So both of the PCI connectors have this red tip. Now, I know why they're doing the red tip here. As you can see, they want you to really know for sure. I'm going to see if I can get this focus to change. There we go. Come on. Now let's come back out. Perfect. They really want you to know that you're plugging this into PCI. They don't want you to make that mistake. But this red's going to stand out a ton. Ugh. But there it is. You've got your red connectors right here. Now, this would be a concern of mine if it was easy to accidentally plug this into the CPU. But it doesn't fit. It'll only go into that connector. So that's great. That's exactly what I want to see. I don't want to see that you can accidentally swap this and put it into the CPU connector. So I don't think they need the red. The red to me just is off-putting. I kind of wish I hadn't done that. But we'll keep moving on. So everything else is going to be black. We have, you know, just as our standard Molex connectors. They do include this goofy floppy drive power. I don't know why we have this still. kind of wish they had a cable that didn't have that. But unfortunately, this is the only Molex cable they have. But, you know, you'll probably be able to hide that. We have a SATA cable. And so everything, everything that is like a peripheral type power and SATA is going to have a little six pin connector that plugs into the peripherals here. It just snaps in nice and easy. And then finally, we do have a CPU connector. But here's the thing. This is another thing I'm not really fond of. So our CPU connector here has two CPU 8-pin connections in one cable. I would prefer to have seen two separate cables for that. So that way, if you, like most, the majority of motherboards are not going to have two 8-pins or even an 8-pin and a 4-pin. So just give me one cable, and if you have to, either put like maybe an extension on there that maybe you can adapt it, or give me really just ideally two separate cables so we don't have to worry about pulling too many amps on one cable. So all around, this looks good, but it could be better. And here's what I'm thinking Gamdius could do in the future to really up the ante of this power supply. And this is, this is, this is it right here, guys, ticket. What if we still use black wire because black wire doesn't look funny but what if instead of ribbon cables, we just did normal cables and then sleeved them with one sleeve over the entire bundle to do a nice looking black, maybe a black slash silver sleeve or something so it'll reflect lighting. It'll make the cable round, which will, will really solve the problems of cable management. People will be like, oh, it's not a flat cable, it's easier to manage, but We'll still have black wire so we don't have those weird colors showing through the tips. And then if we put a sleeve from there that just covers the whole cable instead of individually sleeving, we can kind of balance cost with looks. It would look very elegant. It wouldn't look maybe quite as cheap as these flat cables can look. And then let's get rid of, while we're doing that, let's please, please get rid of these red connections and just really make sure that you can only plug them into one spot. That would really take this up to just deity levels of power supply. But I think those are minor complaints. I don't see that as being a huge deal. A little bit longer of a closer look, but I hope this makes this power supply really make sense. Of course, I give you an epic cable bag that is kind of maybe not the most point, <laughs> maybe a little pointless, but it's a nice looking bag and, you know, it's easy to keep everything together that way. All right, guys, let's go ahead now and start talking about actual performance with some voltage regulation and power consumption. Okay, guys, so let's go ahead and talk about these testing results. Now, if you want a little more detail on how I did my testing method and even details like the packaging and stuff, you can follow the link in the description once I get that uh, written review finished. You can go over to pureoverclock.com 
and you'll be able to check those out. So let's just do a quick overview though of the actual results here. So voltage regulation was really tight with this guy and I actually get closer to 700 watts when I do a full system load and then go to idle from there and I had very little little uh, variance in my voltage between full load and idle. So I was pretty impressed. I mean, Gandius is doing a really good job with the, with the Estrape there. Um, the other thing that I went ahead and checked out though was obviously power consumption. Now, I didn't have another 650 gold unit or other 650 bronzes and stuff at the time for this. So I was comparing to a titanium rated 800 watt unit, which is a really unfair advantage. And even though Gamdius isn't gonna come as close on power consumption and efficiency, they still came really, really good. Like, like they're not gonna beat out titanium, but they were, they were surprisingly close. So I was impressed with that. Um, of course, looking at just with the system off and what our power consumption was looking like, we're looking at just a little over a watt and per hour in, in, each, in each unit that we compared to. So that was great as well. Where the Gambius will fall a little bit behind, though, was noise levels on the fan. So the you know, when we're looking at about 48 decibels, that's fairly loud, but at least it wasn't obnoxious loud. Um, it's something that if you don't have really loud fans on a graphics card though, you'll definitely notice it. But when these two Sapphire Tri-Xs sp start spinning up with all that heat, then it's like, okay, I don't really even hear the power supply at that point. So it's something that too, if you're not pushing it to the limits of the 650 watts, you'll probably won't have issues with the fan noise. It seems to do pretty well. But if you start really pushing the limits of the power supply, well, you probably should just buy a little bit higher wattage power supply. All in all, this is gonna be an absolute excellent unit for a single card and motherboard in almost every case because most single cards now aren't gonna push the limits past 650, but even some Crossfire and SLI configurations are gonna do all right as well. So I'm very pleased with the performance. Let's go ahead now and wrap up this review. So as usual, things are gonna really come down to price. Now, Gamdius um, doesn't have a huge um, market per se within the States, but they do have this guy listed on Newegg and it's pretty easy to get a hold of as a result. Newegg right now is showing the 650 watt for about a, almost 150, just shy of $150. And that's quite a bit of money for a 650 watt gold rated power supply. Now, we have some really great performance. We have some really great looks. The RGB fan definitely takes a factor that we gotta consider, but there's a few problems. For one, Thermaltake has their own RGB versions of power supplies that are extremely competitive. And I mean extremely. They have one of their RGB variants that is gold rated and it doesn't have the intelligent software, but it looks like it gives you a multicolor lighting effect and it's just a little over $80. That is a huge price difference. Now, would I take Gamdius any day over the Thermaltake on overall design? Yeah, I don't like the fact that Thermaltake does that weird RGB color logo on it. It just looks tacky to me, and I love the more muted outward design with just the lighting effects to be a little brighter that Gamdius is doing. So it's not that I don't like Gamdius more, but that's a huge price to, to consider. But I think the even bigger issue that Gamdius has to overcome is just their own 750 watt power supply. That guy's only about 10, 15 bucks or so more than this. Why would you get a 650 like this if for just a few dollars more you can get seven, an extra 100 watts and still have all the RGB effects? That will be the only thing that's really hitting Gamdius hard is that price is just, is just, it's just a little too high. But man, if it wasn't for that price, I feel like we have exceptional performance and a lot of really good quality here. So maybe if we're lucky, Gamdius, as they're able to get maybe more of a foothold, at least in the US market, they will be able to bring that price down and it'll really be worth it. 
Guys, this is definitely a great piece of hardware and it is so close to me wanting to say editor's choice just on looks alone, but I really can't ignore that price. The performance is, uh, I really want to, but I'm gonna have to say it's a great hardware award because while I really love it, it's too hard to ignore some of the competition right now. And that's really only the fault of the price. Yeah, there are some minor complaints, but they're not big major things. Now, just to recap a little bit though, if Gamdius really ups the quality of those cables to make those look like premier cables, whether it be individual sleeving or some kind of sleeving that even if it's around the whole cable, just makes them look top notch and we don't have multicolored wires sticking out of the ends, then we're gonna start really having to reconsider that value. Also, monitoring intelligent software would make a difference. But all around, I love this power supply. I am a huge fan. And guys, I will say, you see a good price drop on these, you should totally pick one up because they are totally worth it. And I still believe this is about the best looking PS unit I have ever seen when I'm talking about just the lighting and the design on the unit itself, the best by far. I love their design on that part. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this review. Let me know in the comments below. I am gonna continuously try to shorten things up, but I can't script. So I'm kinda gonna have to try to do it the best I can off the cuff, you know. I don't, I don't have the time and resources yet. So keep me posted on comments though. They are helpful and I will gladly take them. Like and subscribe if you want to. Feel free to share this review if you think it might help somebody else out and I will catch you later.